Hey everyone, my name is Matt and welcome back to the channel and the early reviews are coming in for Thor Love and Thunder and it is not looking good so far. Now I know I just did a video review on Chris Pratt's The Terminal List, which I highly recommend you go check that out. And I crapped all over the critics review of that saying that critics don't know what they're talking about and they're garbage. And I stand true to that. The critics are garbage and they don't know what they're talking about. But most of the time, you have these critics that are very in line with Disney, Marvel, Hollywood. They have that agenda, right? So when you see these shill critics that really don't know what they're talking about, crap on their own stuff, that's where it's a little bit interesting, at least in my opinion, to review and see. Because a lot of these movies get praised no matter what. Even some of the positive reviews in this tomato meter were still negative, but yet they still gave it a positive review, which I'll show you here in just a second. So, um, but as of right now, as you could tell from the thumbnail, this is right now early ranked as one of the lowest MCU films to come out to date. And this isn't really good. Phase four has not been good so far for Marvel. A lot of those movies have been mainly misses and not hits. Some have been okay, especially some of the, some of the shows like Loki, I would say was a decent show. Um, for Marvel, it was considered a hit. I didn't enjoy it, but others did. But this, as of right now, is not looking good. And actually, if you look at the review here, here, all critics, you're at 71%. Top critics, you're only at 58%. Again, I don't really care about top critics. These people don't know what they're talking about. They're the types that uh, smell their own farts and love it and look down at us like we're garbage. But uh, getting into the reviews, you can see here how poorly they kind of the trash on this film and again it's not it's not really the normal when you when you really look at a lot of these critics especially these these considered top critics um, but let's go over a couple of them and I can show you what I'm talking about it says here love and thunder is such a hasty feeling mess of a movie it might get the viewer to come around to gore's bloodthirsty perspective even a positive one, like I mentioned earlier, it says here, Thor, Love and Thunder is scattershot, awkwardly jumping around without any apparent cohesion. It hurriedly careens around the cosmos without much thought or depth, but they still gave it a positive review. That's not good. Again, it's like we are consistently trying to be positive about mediocrity. We have to crap and trash mediocrity because that's the only reason why the mediocrity continues. If you keep going out and watching these movies and being positive about them, even though they suck and they're trash, it's not a good thing. That's why we keep getting it. I, I remember it was in reference to Star Wars saying that any Star Wars is better than no Star Wars. And that, to me, is the massive problem that I see. That is not a good mindset to have, at least in my opinion. I would rather have nothing than garbage content coming out. What is the point? It dilutes it. When you just keep pumping out corporate trash over and over with no love, with no affection of the franchise, and it's just dribble. Why go and spend the money to watch it? Why invest your time in it? Especially now. Ticket prices are through the roof. Gas prices are through the roof. The economy's in bad trouble. This stuff isn't cheap. They don't deserve your money if the movies are bad. That's with any movie, not just Marvel, Disney, uh, DC, whoever. It's, it's any IP whatsoever. If it's garbage, if it's trash, don't give them your money. They don't deserve it, especially when they probably hate you anyway. But let's get back to the reviews. Let's hope Marvel can move past this misstep and pump up the love and thunder with more than a weird Zeus Helmsworth butt and screaming goats. Watiti managed to create moments, but not the epic fun comedy adventure we were thoroughly hoping for. Watiti is too preoccupied with trying to land the same jokes, and he burdens the film with a wishy-washy love story, which even by the MCU's low standards feels shallow and perfunctory. Uh, crushing on his ex while protecting his own skin feels pretty superficial. It's slight premise with weak stakes. Do these zigzags and moods, and that is, again, another positive. Do these zigzags and mood swings work? Not entirely, but at its fizziest, the camaraderie among the principal buoys the picture. Again, I, I don't see how that's a positive review. That's pretty bad. Uh, Marvel's campiest entry yet, but sadly ventures too far into parody. Disjointed and at times verging on incomprehensible Thor love and thunder is a mismatch of genres that doesn't always flow 
That is that is not good. Like I said, this is not a good thing for them, especially like I said, when you have your your uh, your shill critics, right? Basically crapping all over this. This is not a good thing for them. Almost feels desperate in its attempt to entertain, fight special effects and jokes and jokes and jokes. But if everything's a joke, then does any of it really matter? And I agree. I know it's supposed to be lighthearted and whatnot. You're not talking about like a, a Snyder film where it's super dark, but everything's it's like clown world at this point. There's no seriousness. Everything's a uh, horrible, tacky joke thrown in at the wrong moment that just takes any weight out of the show. It just, I don't know. I don't really know who their core audience anymore is. It's got to be just like Twitter weirdos that don't care, right? It's the the stands that no matter what you slap on it, if as long as it's got Marvel or as long as it got Star Wars or whatever, they're going to eat it up and consume because that's just what they do. They don't really care about uh, quality. They don't care about anything besides the fact of we just need more content to consume and now wait for next content so we can keep consuming. They don't care about quality because that's just, unfortunately, the reality. But that is why we continue to get terrible content coming out from Marvel, DC, and they keep pushing all this nonsense. So yeah, in my opinion, I had, personally, I had no desire to see this film at all. It looked dumb. I don't really care about Marvel anymore. It's just one bad thing after another. Um, I have no idea how this is going to perform. You know, early reviews don't help like this, in my opinion. Um, word of mouth really matters. And I, as we saw with Top Gun and how it's absolutely destroyed the box office, word of mouth is going to matter significantly with this film. And as the audience reviews come out and people are maybe crapping on it or loving it, that's really going to determine what this does at the box office, at least in my opinion. With the economy being the way it is, it's not cheap anymore to go see these things. Why give them a, a significant amount of your money for poor content, Just especially if you have Disney+. Plus. And this is even if you're a pro Disney person and you've stumbled upon my video. <laughs> I would wait. You know, If you're seeing your favorite crit uh, critic online or whatever and they're like, eh, it's all right, why go? Just wait. You wait a month, it's going to be on Disney Plus, and then you don't have to pay a dime than what you're already paying for their monthly service. So I don't know. I don't think this is good news for them. Um, it'll probably make its money back, but who knows? Again, we saw with Top Gun that word of mouth matters. And if people are trashing all over this film, uh, you know, it, it may not do as much or as well as they think it's going to be doing. So if you like this video, hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, take care.